y'all, and welcome back to Apron Strings. Today is the day we do cooking for one or two, and I'm going to make the cutest little baby meatloaf today. Now, some people like to make meatloaf and have a bunch left over for sandwiches or whatever. Some people just like to have it one time and not, not warm up stuff. Sometimes meat don't taste real good warmed up. I personally like warmed up meatloaf sandwiches with ketchup on them. But we're just going to make a meatloaf today that fits in this little five inch pan. And it'll be a good serving for two people or for one pig, whichever. So I'm going to bring y'all over and let you see what we're doing. We're going to get it made and in the oven. It's going to cook for 30 minutes and then we're going to put a little bit of glaze on it. Cook it for 20 more minutes. Then we'll have us a meatloaf. And I don't know what I'm going to fix to go with it, but that's going to be mine and Troy's supper tonight. And then I'll get in there and get this video uploaded. And y'all will see it sometimes when it comes out after midnight, Friday night, which means Saturday morning as usual. So it depends on how fast the internet's working. Our internet has been about to get on my last nerve and jump up and down. It's slower than Christmas, and that's slow. Christmas takes a long time to get here. Anyway, I'm going to... Um, Shut up for a few minutes and make a meatloaf. Y'all come on and watch. Okay, now we're going to need uh, six ounces of ground beef, and I did measure it on my scale. And you need two tablespoons of chopped onion, uh, one garlic clove, you need a fourth of a teaspoon of salt, an eighth of a teaspoon of black pepper, two tablespoons of seasoned breadcrumbs, and the only ones I had seasoned was Italian seasoning, and so I used that. And you want one fourth of a teaspoon of dried basil. So, and then you're going to use, I think, a teaspoon of Worcestershire sauce. No, ma'am, a fourth of a teaspoon of Worcestershire, please. But the first thing we're going to do, I've got a tablespoon of olive oil per my recipe. And I'm going to heat that for just a little bit. And then I'm just going to uh, put my onions in there until they get a little bit soft. And then I'll add the garlic for just a jiffy till it gets fragrant. And then we're going to mix it all with the meat and get it to baking. So I hope that y'all try this and you like it. That little bit of basil gives it a different flavor. Now, if y'all don't like that, just leave it out. But I think it makes it yummy. So one time my friends and I, a couple of girlfriends, went on a trip to Pennsylvania. And there's this little cafe where they, they've been before. And that's where we ate supper two evenings. And I got meatloaf both times because they told me how good the meatloaf was. And y'all, it had something in it, and I'm not sure but what it might have been basil. So I'm going to try basil in this little one, and that way I won't have a whole bunch left over if we don't really like it. So I'm going to try basil tonight. And in FYI, we still have not heard one thing from the transplant team. So we're still on hold in the waiting room. And I don't like waiting. I'm not patient. I want to know a yes or no. I could do the next step of waiting, but you want to know. So maybe we'll hear something this week. I hope so. Okay, let me get the two tablespoons of onions in my oil over here. I'll just scoop them up with my knife. You need the sizzle, so I guess it's not hot enough yet, but I guarantee you with that fire under it, it'll get hot. I would. See, I just sliced just a little piece off of this onion and uh, give me two tablespoons. So let me get me something to stir it with and let those just kind of get clear and saute down a little bit. I hope y'all are enjoying your days. I hope y'all are using it, that gift that God's given you, that present, open it up, have fun. And don't worry, be happy. You can't fix it anyway. Worrying just takes the joy out of life. Here's the deal. If you can fix something, get off your rear and fix it. And if you can't fix it, then don't worry about it. It is what it is. And I know everybody didn't like that, but I'm pretty well like that. I'm not a worrier. I just, you know, come what may, if I can fix it, I do. And if I... I pray about it, and I try to have faith for the good Lord to fix it, and if He chooses not to for whatever the reason, then you just roll with the flow. There's nothing else you can do. But don't get grumpy and hateful and irritable because it ain't what you wanted. 
you can't make it be anything that you want it to be. You can just hope for it. So enjoy that gift because you may not get one tomorrow. This might be the day that your numbers pull. Enjoy every day. Okay, I hear it sizzling a little bit now. I had to go today to Lowe's. The wax seal in my one of our bathrooms needed replacing, but Troy needed some extra long bolts. And let me tell you what, I don't think there's been about three people that works at Lowe's because you can't ever find anybody to help you. So I asked one girl, could she help me? And I told her what I needed, and she said, oh, it's on all so-and-so about middle ways down on the right. So I should have got a paycheck from Lowe's today because I went and helped myself, but I did find what I needed. But that's really one of my pet peeves is to go in a store and there's nobody to help you. I mean, if they didn't have customers, they couldn't be open, so they need to take care of their customers. So I took care of a customer today and I got what I needed. So I got that done and I ran by Kroger because if you do that online coupon clipping thingamajigger, they had asparagus for 67 cents a bunch and you could get five. So I got me five bunches of asparagus and I think I'm just going to go in and simmer and saute, simmer down all of it and um, put it in the ice box and just bring it out a serving at a time because I'll eat it for it ruins. I love asparagus. So anyway, that was my day. Oh, I had to go get medicine for Troy. He's got to have a tooth taken care of because you can't have any chance of having infection with this transplant thing that's going on. So he went to the dentist and has to take an antibiotic and have a where there was a root canal that's got to be removed. Now y'all just know everything. But that's what life was for me today. Sure was. I was in the kind of the fast lane. Okay, I'm going to add my garlic to this. And that's when it's going to smell good. I wish y'all could smell. But you can't. I'm going to let that do just a little bit and then we'll mix it with our meat and get everything going. Do y'all have one of these little things that, uh, that you put soap in the handle like Dawn dish soap in the handle and you punch that button and soap comes out and you wash with it? Well, mine that was on there, I'm telling you, it looked like a mad chicken. Its feathers were going everywhere. It was wore out. So I went to Bed Bath & Beyond thinking I would just get me another one. And I didn't remember what brand this was. But a new one was $13 and something, and I didn't bring my coupon with me. So I looked over there, and they had two of these little replacement things that just slide off and replace for $4 and something. So I thought, I can bring them back if they don't work, but guess what? I got to replace I love this thing. I use it all the time. You just punch that and get some soap and wash your skillet or whatever. You don't have to make a big pan of dish, dish water. So anyhow, it's an OXO brand, and you can get those little replaceable heads for it. So that makes it last a long time and your money go further. So that's a little gadget that I worked on this week that I like. Okay, where is my thingy that I do my paint with? Well, my onions are done. So I guess I'll just break my meat up with a spoon. I got that little thing that breaks it up for you from Pampered Chef that's probably in one of those drawers. So I think that today... I won't use that. Okay, we're going to uh, mash the meat around a little bit so it'd be kind of spread out. Can y'all see? Y'all see a good bit. Okay. I'm just breaking the meat up in here. And I'm going to put these onions and garlic in there. Ooh, that smelled good. And we're going to put a fourth teaspoon, that one's a half, we need a fourth, of Worcestershire sauce. And 
that came to seven drops if everybody's dropper drops the same amount. Okay. And I'm going to put my breadcrumbs, my salt and pepper and basil in. And then we need one egg. Let's see. I just brought eggs in from out in the from the chickens. We'll put us one egg for moisture and binding. And I'm just going to stir this around. And then I'm going to shape it in a little five inch patty thing of a watcher. And that's a big word. I don't want to spit it. I'm going to make it in a five inch loaf. And we will put it in our small loaf pan. And sometimes my head gets chopped off because I'm standing on a wellness mat. That's the name of the manufacturer. And it makes it easier to stand. Your legs and feet don't hurt as bad, but it's about an inch thick. And I set my camera to stand to the side here, and then I get over here on this mat. Sometimes it looks like I don't have the top of my head, but I do. All of me is still here. If I keep being shut up in this house, there's going to be more of me here. All I want to do is go through the kitchen and get a bite of something. That's not good. Not good at all. Well, the food's good, but the results is not good. Now, this makes a moist little meatloaf. It's not dry. So, I think you'd like it. And we'll show you what I usually put with the meatloaf. I like to buy these Idahoan roasted garlic potatoes. And it makes, you use two cups of water in this, so it makes about two cups. And all I add to them is about a fourth of a cup of sour cream, and that makes them soft and not rubbery like instant potatoes. And that is a delicious side. So we're probably going to have these potatoes, meatloaf, and some of that asparagus after a while. But we got to get the meatloaf done before we can have anything, huh? So I'm going to put my meatloaf in here and just kind of pat it. If you'll notice, I'm not getting my hands in it today. Get in there. Get in that cute little pan. I don't know how many of y'all bake sourdough bread. But I do, and I've made a, I've made it before on my channel. But um, generally, my recipe one making it with one cup of, of the uh, starter makes such a big loaf that I need to make one little one like this and one regular size loaf. So yesterday evening, I thought, I wonder if my Pullman pan would work just to leave the lid off and make one. One loaf instead of those others, y'all. That Pullman pan made a perfect loaf of just one loaf of sourdough bread. And of course, I, I didn't put the lid on it, so it, look at that. It, and this is a lock and lock that holds it all. But if you make sourdough and you're having trouble having too big of a loaf, then it mushrooms because there's too much in just one regular loaf pan, try your Pullman pan if you have one. Because it just, it made the best loaf, and that's what I'll do from now on. And it'll keep, maybe it'll all keep till we eat it. Okay, let me tell you what, I've been like a flea at the flea market. I've been hopping around today, hadn't I? I'm going to look on here and be sure I got everything. Olive oil, onions, garlic, basil, beef, salt, pepper, Worcestershire, egg, breadcrumbs. And then we're going to cook it, and then we're going to use, it says ketchup and molasses. I'll probably just put a little pinch of brown sugar in it and put it on the top. And I may not put any sugar in it because the ketchup's kind of sweet and Troy don't really like sweet and I want him to eat some. So I'm going to put this over there for 30 minutes and I'm going to pull it out. I'll probably just squirt a little ketchup on it and sprinkle a little onion and garlic powder in the ketchup and stir it around a snitch. Put it back in there and cook it 20 more minutes and it'll be ready. Okay, we got the little, old, little bit of meatloaf out and I'm going to... Um, put my glaze on it and let me tell y'all what I did. I did three tablespoons of ketchup and a teaspoon of um, gar onion powder and a half a teaspoon of garlic powder. 
Then I actually went back and added a little bit more garlic because I wanted that flavor. I added a little bit of Louisiana Red Hot, about three dashes, and I added a, about a half a teaspoon of mustard. And then I put a little bit of black pepper. And what else did I put? I think that's all. A little Worcestershire, about a fourth of a teaspoon of Worcestershire in my sauce here. Now y'all can put whatever you want in yours. But I was just going to tell you, it's not the molasses and ketchup that the recipe shows. So let me get this back in the oven. It says 20 minutes. I think my meatloaf's done. I'm just going to do it for probably 5 or 6 minutes and use the thermometer. And I'll let y'all know how long I do it the second time. Okay, I got the meatloaf out of the oven. And it smells wonderful. And let me tell you, I can smell the, the pepper sauce that I put in that. Uh, glaze. I'm going to let it cool just a minute and then I'm going to take it out and I hope it'll fit on this little plate right here that belonged to my great grandmother. It's Homer Laughlin. I don't know what it's worth but anyhow I think I think it'll fit on there and that'll be a pretty display so when it cools a little bit I'll put it on here and cut a little piece off and taste it and let y'all know how it tastes. Now isn't that just pretty and it's so cute I'm fixing to fix the camera where you can see me and I'll cut a piece of it and we'll see what it tastes like. Okay, here it is on the plate. It's just a cute little meatloaf. It says for one or two, but I really think if somebody wasn't just starving, if it's three ladies, you can get three servings out of that. But uh, we'll see how much is left after Troy and I have supper after a while. Here it is all sliced and I got five slices. And I just cut that one little bite off the end, so that's, that's a small, you know, that's more than enough for one, but it's not enough that you're going to waste a bunch. And this was in the little five by two and a half or three inch mini loaf pan. I'm going to get me a knife over here and cut just a little piece of this off. It's hot, but I want to taste it. Just a bite. See what it tastes like. I hope that basil comes through. That's what I'm looking forward to. You have to blow it a little bit. It's okay to blow it if you're going to take that bite, but I want somebody else blowing my food and giving it to me. They might have one or two germs. That's a keeper. Y'all need to make it. And of course, if you wanted to make more, just multiply it, but it's very, very moist. It's not dry and packy like a regular meatloaf. And I'm glad to have that because I'll make, and, and usually I don't measure when I make a meatloaf. So I end up, oh no, I'm going to have to make two meatloaves. Well, then I have meatloaf left over. And if company don't come to help eat it, that means the grandkids or the kids, I end up putting it in the freezer and forgetting about it, and it'll... If I don't vacuum seal it, it'll freezer burn. But this will be perfect for us. So I want y'all to try it. And when you try one of the recipes, please go back and comment on it and tell me what you think about it. it makes me feel good to know that I'm not just batting the air with all this stuff, that y'all are actually using it and it's making your kitchen easier and your family fuller and happier. Y'all take care of yourself. Still put you a little bit of food back because we don't know what natural disaster or man-made disaster might happen and you don't want to have to run to the store. I think a lot of people that were in this Texas blizzard have learned their lesson about depending on eating fast food every day because it wasn't available and the stores were, we couldn't even get milk. The stores were empty. I didn't have to worry about it. I had a few extra things and we, we fared just fine. I got a crumb of that meatloaf in my throat. Anyway, give a smile away and you'll get one back. Sometimes you have to pull that mask down to let them see it or they can see your eyes twinkle. Bash your eyes at them or something. Give people a little bit of joy that you're unwrapping every day because everybody don't know that secret. So share your joy with somebody. Share with somebody that's less fortunate than you are and thank God for everything he's given you. And by all means, come back here Saturday because we're going to have something else good and you're going to like it. It could be a regular food or it could be a party food, but it's good. 
unless I change my mind, and I'm subject to do that. But the Lord bless y'all, and I'll see you Saturday.